Hi Pisces. It took me a second to get warmed up to your energy and what's going on with you all um, for your April reading. And here we are. I had to sit with it for a second because it's it's actually a really great month for you all. It's a really interesting time of year for you. I hope you all had beautiful birthdays leading into this time of year. But once we're in Aries season, we're in territory that for you represents something very different than the collective, which is the second house of your money, your possessions, what you find beautiful in the physical plane. Um, and that's in this really directive, intense energy of Aries. And we have a lot of things going on in Aries. The first half of the month is Aries season, really. You know, we have a Mercury retrograde in Aries in your second house of what you find beautiful. You're going to be combing over details. We have a new moon in Aries, which is all about planting our seeds of intention about what we have around us, what we find beautiful. We're giving our energy as far as beautifying and uh, physically, physically what we're doing. Take some time, you know, maybe not make all your changes this month, but you're going to be thinking about how you're wanting to change those things. And then we have Chiron heading into your sixth house. You know, the wounded healer has been hanging out in your sign for quite a while, and now he's in Aries. And here's another thing, fixing your sense of worth. You know, not fixing, that's the wrong word. A, sitting with your relationship with your self-worth, with where you're finding that you feel you're not enough, you're not good enough, where you're feeling less than, that's going to be coming up. So the first half of the month is kind of like homework. I think the note that I said is going from homework energy straight into ascending into greater heights and new beginnings. So the month really takes you back down to the ground, has you do some homework with your possessions and your material things, and then Taurus season starts on the 19th which is beautiful. Um, that's your third house of communication, short distance travel. It's very flirtatious, fun energy. It's a lot lighter for you. Taurus is a much easier energy for you, Pisceans. We have a Pluto retrograde on the 22nd and your 11th house of your, like, the collective, your friendships. And this is going all the way through until September 30th. So you may be finding that you are adjusting areas with friendships. Once again, it goes back to self-worth. You guys are really going through, I mean, this is why it's taking me a second to sit down with your energy because it's like you guys are going through a really big assessment period of your, of your self-worth and the type of people you want around you and the type of things you want around you and the type of lifestyle you want around you. And it's hitting hard in April. However, you know, by the end of the month, we also have a full moon in Scorpio, which is your fifth house or no, it's your ninth house. I'm sorry. It's your ninth house. And Scorpio energy for you is really symbiotic. I mean, this is all about long-distance travel, big philosophical ideas, reopening doors into new, new horizons for yourself, thinking big, big picture as far as travel, big picture as far as where you want to live, big picture as far as what you want to, where you want to be a leader in the world and where you want to make changes. So... All of it is leading you into some really symbiotic, wonderful, warm energy. But you are you are being asked to really get real with um, what you've made changes in in your life, why you've wanted to make those changes, and and how you need to kind of enact some of those. I think some of you have maybe been trying to find the right timing to make some of these changes, find the right timing to invest in some new things and this month is going to be a great month to get real about that as far as astrology is concerned. Um, there's a real introspection here over what the last year before your birthday brought you and now that you're in this new year, in this new solar year and we're in this new western astrological year, what does that mean for you? You know, you've grown a lot, you've changed a lot, you've gotten fed up with certain things that no longer serve you and now it's almost like I feel like there's just this kind of like quiet that descends, where you have to deal with where you feel like you don't have self-worth, where you have to deal with where you feel like you're uncomfortable. Now let's see what we have here as far as cards. I'm turning these over. And we have a lot of deep, beautiful energy. And the end of the month does have some character showing up. But first we have the homework. Um, I'll show you the first three cards. Two of Swords, Ten of Wands, Nine of Pentacles. So... What do we have going on here? We have 
this is the homework I was talking about. And it, and what's nice about this is it progresses, right, from being kind of lost to feeling a little bit more grounded. And I think this is exactly it. There's a little bit of blindness here you guys are coming into in the beginning of April. It's kind of like if you've made big changes in your life or you're planning on making changes or you're about to or you can just feel the tide shift, there's almost like an uncertainty. Like you might get nervous. Like is this really what I was going for? And you may feel like you've taken on too much or you aren't ready for this new challenge or you may be uncertain about what it is that you're allowed to do. Um, this may be a time where you really feel like you have to kind of take the onus on your own shoulders. Now, the Two of Swords is always protective energy. It slows you down enough to listen in not to take all the action all the time and to listen into honestly what I'm seeing here is where, where are you feeling like something is weighing you down where are you feeling like you are taking the onus of whatever this choice was this experience was and putting it on your shoulders because the slowdown with the mercury retrograde in your second house and then eventually the Pluto retrograde um, in your 11th house these are areas where you, you're, these are great retrogrades for just refining that. Where are you holding too much? Where are you self-doubting? Where are you feeling self-doubt and then feeling like you need to put a whole bunch of extra weight on your shoulders in order to move forward? You know, and if you can kind of breathe through that, that time, the first couple weeks of the month, I do see you coming back out into, to kind of seeing clearly again, like um, having clear lenses again, where you can see that you're doing okay. You're doing okay. You have things, things are going well. And there may be, you know, a little bit of distortion in your mind with what, where you are. You may feel a little nervous about where you are, a little nervous about what you've taken on, what, you've, what changes you've made. And yet, in reality, you're right where you need to be. So this is a really nice reminder that despite the fact that you may feel that you need to be doing things differently or you've made mistakes or... <laughs> You, you really shouldn't be where you are, but you are, you're there and you feel like you need to make changes. Despite that, in reality, you've made a ton of changes. You've shed an old skin, basically, and you are really actually where you need to be. So that's just a nice reminder. Now, when we get to the middle of the month, because I'm doing three sets of three here for this reading. When we get to the middle of the month, the energy gets interesting and there is a transformation going on here. Like I said, the shift from Aries into Taurus season for Pisces, it's, it's a good shift. It goes from being more of this grounded homework assessment energy, especially this month, the way the planets are working into much more of the symbiotic action focused energy. And what I'm kind of seeing here, you guys is a lightning strike moment. Now the tower, <laughs> tower gets a bad rap, but the tower is actually an amazing card. I'm a huge fan of the tower. Um, there's no bias here. It's just that you may be getting some truths and this isn't always about somebody coming in from the outside and giving you some kind of catastrophic news that shuffles your whole world around. This can really, this can be that. It can be that you get some surprise news. You get a surprise realization about something from somebody else from the outside world absolutely but this can also be about a revelation inside of yourself a big realization of something that needs to change for me you know the tower symbolically it's about toppling the aristocracy the leaders it's royalty it's about toppling a power dynamic that no longer serves and at a deeper spiritual level, that is freeing you from the tower. You know, like I think about Rapunzel. If Rapunzel has her way, she would lightning strike that tower and get out and go live her life, right? She wouldn't want to be stuck up at the top of that tower. And the tower is freeing energy. It frees you up. So if it is external, somebody coming in and giving you some kind of, you have a shock or like a surprise revelation about something, it could be that. It can also be that you realize what what it is, whatever this is that you're feeling you needed to assess and change, that you figure it out. And it's so clear that you can't go back to living life the way you were even a week before. You know, you know these moments. We've all had these moments where it's like, this job is not serving anymore. This city is not serving me more anymore. This relationship's not serving me anymore. And I have to go. And there's no going back. 
right? So the tower doesn't always work as a catastrophic external thing. It can be very much about your internal. And I even get a bit of a sense that it's much more about your internal process because it's next to the Four of Swords and the Two of Wands. And these are much more internal cards. Whatever this realization is, it's something that's coming from a place of reflection and depth. It's coming from a place of realizing deep self-realization. Deep self-realization of the shifts you're needing to make. Um, and for some of you, this tower moment, this clarifier, you know, it's like sitting in a really dark night and it's a really stormy, windy, miserable dark night and the lightning strikes and you can see the entire um, vista outside. It's like that where you are able to see clearly and it's, it's a lot of information to take in at once. So another part of this is that you're going to be asked to slow down and just integrate it a little bit. You, you're not going to act on all of this information right away. What you're going to do is you're going to integrate it. You're going to take a slow down, you know, with these retrograde act energies and we have, you know, Jupiter retrograde in Scorpio as well for a little while here. There's a lot of retrogrades going on once we hit April. It's a great time to reassess and not just act, but reassess. And what that's leading you to is a much bigger vista. I mean, here's the thing. What I'm seeing with Pisces is, yes, we are tearing down some old self-perceptions. We are tearing down some old relationships, some old perceptions of self and place in the world. We are. We're doing that. And... In doing that, it's a really good thing. So you integrate it, and then you're able to see your bigger horizon, because the Two of Wands is a portal card. You are standing at the edge of a much bigger picture. You haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen it yet. You knew you had to make changes. You knew you had to release some things. You knew you had to shift and become something different than what you were. You knew you had to look out further. And now you're really at the beginning of that process of inviting in the world travel. Now, like what I was saying is that full moon in Scorpio is really good energy for you because that is going to be illuminating where you want to take your long distance travel, where you want to take your projects, where you want to take your philosophy, your life philosophy. This is great energy for getting that extended vision. And I think a little bit of what's kind of been going on with you guys is you've kind of had short sighted vision a little bit for a little while because you've been doing all this internal work and like the winter and even through your birthdays, it was kind of this self reflective, almost crumbling down of your energy in order for you to get freed up and clear here. And now I'm just starting to see the process taking effect, which is really exciting for Piscean energy. I think in general, like you guys are ready for a new rebirth, a re new iteration of yourselves. And it's been a, it's kind of been a slow, painful process. And a lot of it has had to do with how you view yourself in, and how you think other people view you and value you and where you're needing to make adjustments. The last three cards here are really interesting because it's, for me, what I'm seeing is with this kind of doorway energy, with this opening at the very end of the month and just kind of feeling like you can really see the bigger picture, you're bringing in some new characters. <laughs> King of Cups, Emperor, Hermit. So, on the one hand, <laughs> you could be meeting a lot of different people. A lot of co-conspirators. You know, water sign energy, scorpionic energy I get with this a lot. Or even another Pisces. You know, Aries energy here with the Emperor. And then, of course, your opposite sign, Virgo. It's a lot of tough energies. Not tough, but like strong energies. These are all very, like, um, they all have an idea of who they are and where they're going and what they're doing. However, they also bring different types of wisdom. Water, fire, earth, right? Three different modes of understanding self. Three different modes through which to experience the material world. The emotional, the action, the leadership oriented, and the spiritual. And all three are getting lit up for you. Some of you, one of these is a partner. A new partner, probably. I have a feeling with that end of the month, with that full moon, and then heading into May, <sighs> romance is going to be strong. Romance is going to be strong. But so is connecting with people who are going to take you somewhere new. Co-conspirators is the word I'm getting here. Really, truly co-conspirators. Now, one thing to keep in mind here as I'm looking through all of this and as I'm looking through what you've just worked through to get to this point where all this energy is coming in to meet you, 
And you could very well be this King of Cups. And this is actually what I'm getting to. You've had to figure out how to value yourself in a way that works for you. And it's important that you remember that even when you get a lot of influencing energies around you that are beautiful and fun and playful and want to bring out your bring out your creativity and your emotional side. Don't forget that you still have that worth. Don't forget your skills that you've learned. When we finally manifest what we want, we come out of the dark woods, we come out of a time of deep homework, and we've done all that work, we felt through it all, and there hasn't been much manifestation, and then we start to get the, the things that we want, the new job, the new relationship, the new creative prospect, which a lot of you I'm seeing that as well, a lot of creative prospects coming in. A lot of creativity, a lot of world travel, a lot of connecting with other people from different parts of the world, all really great energies. Once those start to happen, that's the key moment where it's really easy to slip back into where you started. Because it's comfortable, you used to have this skill set, now you have a new one. And it's like when you something new comes in, and when you're actually living it, it's tempting to go back to the mode that you were in. But the big assignment for you guys at the end of this month is going to be to remember all that work you did to get here and stick with it. Stick with that team that you've built for yourself. Stick with that self-worth. Don't let anybody and their different viewpoints, because they're going to have their own opinions about what it is, sway you from all the work you've done. Don't let somebody take you off your center point. Because it'll be tempting to get swept away. With those two energies, it's easy to get swept away in it. But I think you're going to be pretty excited about the end of this month. I mean, I'm giving you like a, a bit of a cautionary tale, but I think the only reason I'm doing that is because I can see that you're going to have so much abundance. You're going to have so much renewal the second half of this month and so much excitement that it's going to be like a high powered engine. You are ready to release all this energy. And that always comes with a bit of vulnerability and a bit of volubility. Like it, it could be a little wobbly at times. So it's exciting. I'm really excited for Pisces. Don't let that tower get you. And don't let your, your, um, those little nagging voices in the back of your head that second guess all your choices over the last few months get to you either. Um, just remember that it's all, you've, you've followed what you've needed to follow and now you're here. All right, I'm gonna close it out at that. Um, I am surrounded here by my beautiful tribe. I have Jill's paintings here behind me. She does beautiful work. Check out her info in the description box as well as Pink Loon. I can't get over this sliced agate. Like, look at the sparkles in there. Mm. Also, 15% off for Pink Loon. All that's going to be in the description box as well as all the info for working with me. I would love to work with my dear, lovely Pisces. Um, and I will be doing readings in April, so get in touch with me. I can give you more info on how to connect with me and also follow me on Instagram. I have so much fun with you all over there. We have a lot of fun. So that's everything for this month. I'm going to like leave it where it is. There's a lot going on with you guys right now. You are very much in shift. You are very much in transformation. You have been for a little while. You're really priming for the next big chapter. So keep that in mind. I'm sending you all my love, my beauties. Mwah.